Hey everybody and welcome to Cut Transform Glue. So I just finished building this vehicle, the Scientific Assessment and Processing Operator or SAPO, which means frog in Portuguese, a name that goes back more than a decade and I'll tell you all about it later. For now, let's hear the story of the science traveler. When working on models built from fault objects, there are three very important aspects. Its shape, if it is symmetric, the material, if the plastic is good, and of course, if you have multiples of it. The Wi-Fi router shells match these three aspects, and for that, were perfect as a base for this unit. From the very beginning, my idea was to build a self-driving science truck that would travel from settlement to settlement. It would provide a mobile lab, quantum computing capabilities, and a lot of other scientific devices. As you can imagine, a lot of heat would be generated from its systems, and therefore a ton of ventilation would be required. The air vents were already there on the starting shapes, almost as if the pieces were just waiting to be combined and tell that story. The quantum computer sits on the back of the truck, away from all other devices. As it generates the most heat of all systems, engineers decided to keep it away from everything else. This also makes sure that it can interfere with either the chemicals on the mobile lab or the vehicle guiding CPUs. Quantum computers are known to be finicky and to require constant repair, so there's a hot swap dock where the whole unit could be removed and replaced if needed, as well as a hatch system for the low complexity maintenance operations. The Pathfinder system, which provides all information needed for the unit to travel around, which includes GPS navigation, high-speed 24-7 satellite connection, and local assessment and danger analysis, with data gathered from sensors and cameras, is installed on the top of the truck. It is alongside the chemical tank on the back, one of the few devices exposed to the outside. Engineers decided to keep it like that so, in case of fatal failure, the whole system can be replaced and even delivered by drone, preventing the loss of the whole unit. Engineers also decided to include extra four input-output interfaces on strategic places so not only sellers can use the onboarder devices but also plug in any additional science tools they might have and use the computational power of the truck. An advanced metal alloy was developed for this unit, making it tough and corrosive resistant but still extremely lightweight, so moving it around wasn't a big challenge in terms of power, but it would definitely face a myriad of terrain types. Not every settlement is located near roads, in fact, many are isolated on forests, deserts or mountains. To face this challenge, creators of SAPO decided to go with big concave wheels. They're made out of memory metal, which goes back to its default shape once it's heated to a certain temperature, in case of damage. Each individual motor is mounted on the wheel itself, which helps with replacement procedures and keeps the center of gravity low, making the science traveler virtually impossible to topple. The tires are airless and adaptive, able to change its roughness according to the terrain and providing a reasonable amount of traction on most places, though alternative tires can be installed and are advised for more challenging terrains. No bolts are needed to change the wheels, as they couple to each suspension arm using a single magnetic shaft. So, in case of tire change or full wheel replacement, each wheel can independently lift off the ground and a system command releases the wheel from the suspension. The suspension, by the way, consists of six arms, one for each wheel, and they all independently move up and down according to what's needed. An array of sensors installed on the bottom of the truck constantly reads the terrain so it knows precisely where to place and move each wheel, looking for the most amount of traction. That, in conjunction with the AI-powered navigation system, is used to create a precise waypoint which constantly updates itself and provides paths optimized for safety, battery consumption and travel time. Just like the wheels, each of these suspension arms are attached to the chassis using a single magnetic bolt and can be easily replaced one by one without the use of any extra tool to lift the truck. 
Different types and lengths of arms can change the stance and the maximum height of the operator and make it more reliable for the settler's need. Even though transporting goods is not a function of the science traveler, being able to move chemicals back and forth could be helpful for its scientific purposes. Thinking of that and advised by the science team, a super resistant tank capable of safely transporting different types of chemicals was added to the back of the operator. It can stand elevated pressures and is strong enough to be exposed to the outside, though the active suspension will take measures to protect the tank and avoid contact with the external factors, such as trees and rocks. It also counts with two side couplers that both provide information about quantities, pressure and all other important factors, as well as a safe and reliable way to deliver what's inside without the need of taking the tank off the truck. Finally, a quick release connector keeps the tank attached to the back of the truck and settlers can, with the help of a forklift or similar, eject the tank by a system request. On the first versions of Sapo, there was no extra protection added to the front of the truck, leaving their area exposed to damage which was not ideal. The guidance system will always provide a safe path and avoid collision, especially frontal ones, but external factors and encounters with other vehicles were a problem on past experiences. The quickest solution that could be implemented not only on newer units but also on older versions was an extra protective rail. This simple and low cost tube prevents external objects from hitting the lower portion of the front which is where most of the sensors and ground guidance systems are installed. This protective rail is also easy to repair and replace in case of need. A couple of high power headlights sit on the front of the unit, providing an adaptive illumination. It directs light forward with proper intensity and avoids shining straight into other units. Its ceramic shield can also trigger a diffuse layer, which makes this light soft and comfortable. Settlers can use this solution for temporary base illumination, which is helpful on night expeditions and experiments. As an extra feature, there's also a lighter projector installed. These infrared projections can be used in conjunction with the Pathfinder system, cameras and sensors, providing an extra layer of precise guidance. The Science Traveler is designed to assist as many sediment types as possible and because of that a lot of challenges came up, including places where technology access was limited. To solve that problem, engineers decided to include a retractable terminal on the side of the unit. It comes with three heavy-duty screens, which are weather-resistant and can be exposed to rain and dust, alongside a large keyboard with some extra keys for different language configurations. This terminal can control all onboarded systems and science tools, so if a specific settlement has limited access to peripherals, all operations can be performed from it. There's also, of course, wireless connectivity that allows for remote access up to 12 consecutive users as well as the four physical interfaces where different peripherals can be plugged, including scientific tools. But this heavy-duty terminal makes sure anyone can perform tasks and use all of its power. To start using it, a simple press of a button from the outside will begin the setting up process and in a matter of seconds the system is ready to go. This particular unit was built to assist on an array of settlements that were having some issues with soil contamination, so it was built with an extra quick release connector on the front of the unit where a dedicated soil analysis device was installed. This tool, which is still on the developing phase, uses data gathered from multiple sensors detecting gases, chemicals, movement and erosion. 
All of that data is then sent and stored on the cloud where there's a huge map being created with the help of AI technology in order to predict and analyze large areas. So in case of a nearby contamination or sudden change on soil, other settlements and authorities can be alerted. This new feature is still on the initial testing stages, so anything can change or even the whole project can be abandoned, but so far the feedback was positive. In case this initiative works, a smaller soil analysis dedicated rover could be developed and constantly roam the territory. This would make sure there's always a reliable and updated map available and food growing communities definitely could benefit from it. This science traveler is a neutral unit and because of that, no camo is needed. The opposite effect is actually what the makers of SAPO decided to achieve, making it super visible and contrasting to its environment. This particular unit was made to serve on a region that is mostly a dirt wasteland, with occasional forests and vegetation, so the neutral color of choice was a warm white that is visible from far away. A simple painting scheme is also desired because in case of damage, settlers can simply replace and repaint some panels. Over time that results on a look that can be chaotic and beat up, but this is not a showcase unit, this is a server of the people, so the more beat up it looks, the more you know it has been of good use for its region. The paint used on the factory was also developed to reflect most of the sunlight, which helps keeping the unit cool. This is super important when a truck is crossing large desert and wasteland areas where overheating has been a problem in the past with some older units. If more than 50% of the original paint is replaced, then settlements are advised to request a maintenance process. The unit then travels to the nearest maintenance center where alongside a series of tests and repairs, a brand new coat of reflective paint is applied. The science operators can go on decades of service and are known for its resilience and durability. This particular unit, number 9412, has been assessing and helping a particularly big settlement that is located near a harsh wasteland, an empty area with the size of a small town that was nuked more than 30 years ago where almost nothing can grow these days. The structures of this big camp are built on top of large metallic panels that were salvaged from big freighter spaceships. Iron and other metals are highly valued, so repurposing large pieces like that is very common in that region. That also allows for some quick move-outs if needed. Modularly, parts of the base can be lifted off the ground, either by wheels or by huge drones, and the whole settlement can move kilometers away in a matter of weeks, without the need of rebuilding everything from the ground up. The metal also provides isolation from the chemicals present on the soil of this wasteland, and being reused from large spaceships are heat and corrosion resistant. In this future, nothing is made with a single use in mind, and virtually everything is either recycled or reused. As I just said, the soil around this settlement is completely dead and contaminated, so all food has to be grown on vertical farms inside the base and it has no useful minerals or metals to be extracted. But this is pretty much the scenario around the world these days, where most of the metal either comes from planets or asteroids. This particular base is pretty big and it has its own energy supply system, which combines fusion technology and solar panels, so energy is not scarce, which allows them to be this isolated. But of course, from time to time, some expeditions for seawater and other important goods are necessary. It also has a robust defense system to take care of intruders. It has an array of air-to-air -air protection turrets and a small army of flamingo units that are good for all types of battles. And I was about to call this one done when a dear patron of the channel gave me this amazing idea for the terminal screens. Can you see that power adapter right there? 
Yeah, the letters on its labels are so small that they would work for the turbino screens. An amazing idea from a patron of the channel that is so genius that I thought of sharing right here. So I just prepared a couple of screens and simply glued them on the top of the paint job. I even had the model on the final coat of matte varnish, but it was totally worth it. And then came the last detail pieces of the project. Some metal detail parts that are gorgeous as they are and weren't painted, some wire work, and of course, the lenses of the Pathfinder. So SAP, which means frog in Portuguese, was the name of my very first scratch build project more than 10 years ago, way before I even thought of making a channel. So as this one is my first truck right here, I decided to make this cool little homage for it. Thank you so much if you watched this far in the video and a very special thank you to my patrons and YouTube members. All of this is only possible because of you. If you want to join an amazing Discord community and hang out with some very creative people, please check the Patreon link below. Let me know what you think in the comment section and as always, thank you for watching.